Judy Stranges, or should I say Dinah Girl? Judy was such a prolific television actress during the 60s and 70s, even if you don't immediately recognize her name, I guarantee that you've seen her in something. For me, Judy will always be best known as Dinah Girl in the Sid and Marty Croft Saturday morning classic Electra Woman and Dinah Girl, part of the Croft Super Show. Electra Woman and Dinah Girl co-star Deidre Hall as the titular superheroine, and Judy was her younger sidekick, a female boy wonder if you will. The show was patterned after the Batman TV series from the late 60s, and just like that show, it was a whole heck of a lot of fun. But as I mentioned, that was the mid-70s. And Judy, well, she'd been working in the entertainment industry for a very long time. So let's go all the way back to Spike Jones. The legendary band leader was actually Judy's uncle, and his TV show from the early 60s allowed young Judy to make a handful of appearances. This wasn't her first gig. She'd actually guest starred in a few other TV shows and even made a movie earlier than that. But Uncle Spike's fame and notoriety helped other family members, including Judy, make important connections within the industry. In fact, Judy's brother worked behind the scenes on the aforementioned Batman TV series from the 60s. And Judy, looking very much like Dinah Girl undercover here, made an appearance on a couple of episodes early on. I think they were ones with Catwoman, and if I remember correctly, musicians Chad and Jeremy were in those episodes as well. After that, numerous guest appearances on many other TV shows followed, but it was on ABC's Room 222 where Judy's star really took off. From 1969 to 1974, Judy co-starred in that show as one of the students, Helen Loomis. According to IMDb, she was in 70 episodes, so most of them. My memories of Room 222 are that it came after the Brady Bunch on Friday nights. And sometimes, just sometimes, we could watch it. But because the show tended to tackle controversial subjects of the day, there were many Friday evenings where the old man would shut us down and suggest that we go read or something. I know, right? Go read or something? What was he thinking? Anyway, as Room 222 was winding down, Judy discovered that she was also a talented vocal actress and she started getting steady work doing that kind of stuff. She was on Saturday morning shows like Hanna-Barbera's The Roman Holidays as well as another fun show, Wheelie and the Chopper Bunch. While I wasn't a huge fan of either of these particular cartoons, it was her next Saturday morning project that would make me a fan forever. Yep, we're talking about Electra Woman and Dinah Girl here, and I got to say that it was Electra fantastic. In a fairly recent podcast, Judy mentioned that all 16 episodes were filmed over the course of just a couple of weeks. According to Judy, they would film almost an episode every day. Holy cow, Batman, think about that. Making Electra Woman and Dinah Girl was really just a tiny, teeny blip in Judy's life, and yet here we are decades later still talking about it. After hanging up the cape and tights, Judy found work on TV shows like Chips, where she made a couple of appearances, and also on The Misadventures of Sheriff Lobo. I promise to talk more about that show, which was a spin-off of BJ and the Bear at a later date. For the time being, however, let's get back to Judy. In 1981, she provided the voice for the title character in the Ruby Spears Saturday morning show Goldie Gold in Action Jack. Goldie is a super rich heiress on the show, the Paris Hilton kind of money, and along with her dog Nugget, oh yeah, and some reporter named Action Jack, she would, on a weekly basis, stumble into some kind of amazing adventure. I actually like this cartoon a lot. It came out right after Raiders of the Lost Ark hit the big screen, and although very different, it had a similar kind of vibe. Judy's last live action appearance on TV was in a 1984 episode of Matt Houston in which her character was ironically enough, billed as Judith Strangis, playing a version of herself, I guess. I'm sure a dramatically different version than the real Judy, but it did seem like a fitting way to say adios to her fans. Aside from a couple of small voice acting gigs, Judy's time in front of a camera or microphone appeared to be over. In 1987, Judy helped write the story for a CBS School Break special about bulimia titled Little Miss Perfect. That particular episode was very well done and would earn Judy an Emmy nomination. But that, as far as I can tell, was it. So what happened and where did she go? Well, if you ask the internet, you will see various comments about a stalker of some sort. Most make mention that the stalker was never identified or apprehended, but it was enough 
to force Judy into making some very life-changing decisions. Again, I can't verify this, but if true, that had to be a very scary time for her. Whatever happened, we know for sure that Judy decided it was time to call it a career and just go live her life, and who can blame her for that? You know, there really isn't all that much information about Judy Stranges, the real person out there. In that same podcast I referred to earlier, Judy noted that she is a pretty private person, and I want to respect that. I do know she's married, or at least some point she was. I'm hoping she still is, and I also know that she kind of stays away from the whole social media thing. If what I mentioned earlier was true, it's easy to understand why she might want to avoid things like Facebook and Twitter. But that doesn't mean that she's a recluse by any means. Judy has made appearances at various events honoring her past work. Here she is in 2010 with cast members from Room 222. Seriously, it doesn't look like either she or Karen Valentine have aged a day. Pretty darn impressive. One might even say they look electra terrific. And here she is with our boys Sid and Marty, along with Electra woman herself, Deirdre Hall. Wow, again, these ladies look Electra awesome. I've referred to a couple of times in this video a podcast that Judy was on a few years ago. That podcast is called the Comic Book Central Podcast, and it's a pretty darn fun listen if you're into comics, TV, and movies. Judy appeared in episode 49, but the podcast is well over 200 episodes now. Like I said, if you're a fan of the same things that I am, you might want to add it to your podcast listening queue. Okay, that is it. One last picture. What a stunning beauty. All right, now it's your turn. Please share your memories in the comments section. And while you're at it, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Maybe even share this video on Facebook or Twitter. And what the heck? Why not subscribe to the channel? I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.